Hello and welcome to the Alpha Artist Q&A. Today we have Irina Pushkaryova. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, yes, that's a great job. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being here. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you. And uh, can you tell us where in the world you are and uh, how is this year going for you so far? I am in Miami, Florida, and it's going great. I mean, many scary things happen, yes, but it's it's been really good so far and it's only getting better. Well, that's great to hear, Irina. Um, and uh, for those who don't know your work, can you tell on your own words who you are as an artist? I am a wildlife painter and my mission is to empower you to focus on yourself and do what makes you happy with paintings of animals that are thriving in nature as a way to connect you with peacefulness, harmony, and joy of wildlife. So I create oil paintings um, in a very specific style. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing mostly marine life. And I started doing it since I moved to Miami. I've been so fascinated with the ocean and just being close to it, like helped my interest, increased my interest in marine wildlife specifically. You know, it's definitely a topic that is like very high in your in our awareness at Alpha as well. We've done projects related to this in the past, so like it's like amazing to get to know artists like yourself. And uh, could you talk a little bit about your background? How how did you get to this, and when did you realize you wanted to be a visual artist? So I started to paint and draw since I was one and a half years old. I do not remember it. My mom told me that. So I was just going on different art classes and like practices, you know, after school when I was still in Russia. And art, art was always an important part of my life. I couldn't live with it. But I did not want to be an artist until I was 15 years old. I wanted to be a doctor, an architect, an interior designer. But then um, I realized that without painting and drawing, you just cannot survive. That's what makes me happy. Creating makes me happy. So I find the ways to do it and make a living out of it. And uh, at 15 years old, something very profound happened that changed my life and actually shaped my artist mission. And uh, I decided to be an artist. So that's how it happened. Do you mind sharing a little bit more about that? <laughs> yes, this period of my life was um, two things happened. One was very joyful, another one was quite painful. I was 15, so I moved to US and I lived in a boarding school. So you live in a dorm. My parents were still in Russia. I did not speak English very well. And I found a group of whom I thought were my friends, Russian speaking girls. And it's the, it was this company that had a lot of bullying talking behind the back and you know toxic stuff going on and I remember a specific moment I'm sitting in a cafeteria huge lunch table like round one we're all sitting in the circle with my Russian you know friends and at this moment I understand that these people don't like me they don't accept me and I felt so sad until the point I wanted to cry I felt very lonely I had no one else at this point of my life. And I felt very shameful and worthless completely. And while it wasn't the most painful moment of my life, but at this moment, I made the decision that I have to leave this group, not because I'm better than them or anything. No, it's just, thank you. This is not my story. Good luck. I'm just, I'm leaving and I'm alone. Do, does not do not speak English very well now too <laughs> sometimes no, it's big, and, it's big <laughs> thank you and ask myself a question well what makes me happy I need some happiness in my life come on mm -hmm. and it was creating drawing painting and I was experimenting with so many styles so I started to work hard in the moment just creating and it led to the most joyful moment two months later I was invited to a very prestigious exhibition for young artists in the US. Amazing. And I, I didn't know that. It was just like, my teacher told me on Monday, the exhibition was on Thursday in the Boca Raton Museum of Art. 
and it was a beautiful gallery. One of my drawings was hang on the wall, beautifully framed with professional tag. And there were many people. And I remember I was standing next to it and there was an artist. She was a local artist, very well known in Boca Raton. And she was just telling me how the, the well done the drawing is, how beautiful it is, what she feels. And she's amazed. Like she's in her 60s, I'm 15 years old. And I'm standing there and I felt so joyful, yeah. so harmonious and so peaceful. There were people around us who were listening to, you know, to her telling me this. And at this moment, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an artist and give those emotions to people. Back then, I did not have the style I'm working right now. I was just still experimenting, but I knew what I wanted to do. And um, that's how I came up to my mission. Because the lesson that I learned from this period of my life is you have to focus on yourself, do what makes you happy, and really work hard. Work hard. Law of attraction, action is important here. And that's just what allows life, God, universe, however you feel comfortable calling it, deliver you best results, great people, and just amazing events and miracles to your life. And um, that is my mission, how I came up well, with it. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. I know that's a personal story, but that's like so beautiful. And I think it makes a complete yeah. difference for people who are appreciating your work to know a, your, a bit more about your trajectory. I would love for you to tell us a bit more. You spoke about purpose, like, and how do you think art can actually touch, like, and transform the pe the lives of people who are interacting with it? I believe that art connects us to our own humanity. So it's inspiring, inspiring emotions, inspiring the best of us, what's best inside of us, and I think. You know, every artist has it differently. Um, my purpose is different from, let's say, I don't know, Alec Monopoly, let's, for example, a pop artist. It's different for every single one of us. But again, it's just connecting you to the what's the best inside of you. Mm -hmm. And we all have it. No, uh, I agree. <laughs> so your work as you mentioned, it talks a lot about marine biology and the ocean. And uh, if you could develop a little bit more about this, you know, and maybe uh, share with us, what is the role that the ocean has in your life? And like, and what is the importance, like maybe something that you believe you as being so connected to it, see it, that a lot of people maybe are, are not aware or still need to be like more aware about it? When I moved to US, I moved to Miami and I, it was nine years ago. And I clearly remember it wasn't as dirty. The ocean was not. Yes, you can see trash around, um, but not at the level it is right now. Right now you see it everywhere, it's horrible. I see the difference. After nine years, the difference is just horrifying. It's horrible. And um, what I believe in is just, I think a lot of problems that are going on in the world right now, political, environmental, social, it's just the reflection of what's within us, what we consciously and unconsciously choose. And it is important to actually, I think, on the individual personal level, start to work on ourselves. Because when you are happy, when you're harmonious within, you don't want to throw away trash. You don't want to pollute the planet. You don't want to be rude to someone. You just don't want this. And I think becoming harmonious, happy within, and if every single one of us, at least half of the people on this planet will do, the changes will be dramatic. And um, I think it starts on a personal level. That's what I'm getting. So thank you so much like that's that's beautiful and i think like, if more people start thinking like you hopefully we'll have a better future ahead of us 
um, Alpha has developed a project around ocean conservation in the past, and like one of the topics was also um, the marine biology. But like we also spoke about plastic pollution, dead zones, like and for me, like in as an individual, that was the first time that I was learning about in detail about some of those problems and the urgency that that we are facing like we we need to solve this problem not like in 50 years we need to start solving it today so we have a chance in 50 years to still have oceans like we know it today um that so that's like extremely important and i think it's through the work of artists like you that we we have a chance to get it done um so i would love to hear a little bit now about your process how how do you start with your paintings like are those based out of um real life images photography like how how, how does it come together for you so i either take images myself or purchase them or the photographer just give it to me always my friends so I get the rights for the image and I reproduce it into the painting. I work in oil, mostly on wood. And um, it's a, I mean, I came up with this style because I hate blend colors. So when you would paint in oil, you, you know, traditional oil painting, which is everything is blended. I hated that. <laughs> so I decided to do the opposite, just to separate the colors. This is how I came up with the style in 2016 and um, I applied it to wildlife and it's a very meditative process it's very slow hard working process um, I always feel very exhausted but also good exhausted after a paint and um, yeah I mean it's uh, it's hard mentally because when you look at the reference image you have to really think how to position the color, how to make the color in order to create a shape in a painting. So I think that's the most hardest thing, not even the mixing, because mixing also takes a lot of time because I would mix the color, then I, I need to see where to apply it. And just, it's, yeah, it's, the process is hard, but it's also very meditative and, it brings you happiness and joy. That's why I do it. But it, it's from reference mostly, yes. From references. No, amazing. Um, and also I'd love to learn who, who are other artists that you, you get your inspiration from or that like when you're developing the style that you would look at like and, uh, and draw references. Um, Chuck Close <laughs> still inspires me. He inspired me since I was like 15. <laughs> and I, funny enough, I don't know how, maybe not consciously, at least, I did not think about his style when I was doing what I'm doing. It's so strange. I find it very strange because his style is very similar, but he developed it, developed it because he has, um, I think it's called dyslexia which got worse with the age. So it's easier for him to separate the colors. Um, but I mean, I love his hard work. I respect his hard work. I respect his motivation and just, um, how you say it, trust in the process and in himself, respect that. Um, one more artist will be, I forgot her last name. She has, she's Ukrainian, but I think she lives in the US. Also, her name is Irina. She recently had an exhibition in New York as well. Um, starts and last name starts on C. I just don't want to say it incorrectly. Come, come the... She's as an or ocean artist. She doesn't do animals. She does ocean paintings, fractal ocean paintings, which are, I mean, amazing. They're very beautiful. And um, I admire how she transforms it because right now she started not just ocean paintings, which are very beautiful, but she also adds like galaxies inside of them, like literally galaxies and um, like star constellations as the reflections, you know, highlight. Yeah. 
I mean, not from a scientific standpoint, but like I think visually, if you think about the ocean, like and like visually, like you know, it does look like like it could be something from like a different world, or just like navigating all of the different creatures, like. Um, so for sure, like I just see an interconnection over there. And Irina, like looking ahead now, so how do you see your work developing and where do you see yourself maybe in five years? Oh, I do not yet in five years. I do not know. Don't know yet, I will be honest. That's fair. What about like, uh, are, are there any plans for the near near future, maybe. Yes, yes. For three years, yes. For five years, not sure. I'm actually working on that because I'm being, um, I'm training into the like I have a course, but I'm taking specifically business for artists. I will be honest, horrible businessman, businesswoman, horrible marketing <laughs> agent. So I have to learn those things hard way. But that's okay. I mean, it needs to be done. I want to um, transition out of marine life and actually start to do something else as well together with marine life. And I want to start experimenting with having the whole natural scenes where you can see not just one, two, three animals, but many of them, even the small little bug on a tree. So creating a very complex composition. This is something that I have on my mind, as well as um, doing something with, so I am interested in uh, Raja Yoga. And we, I don't know if you heard of this, chakras, that's what we have, you know. Yeah. Every chakra is responsible for every, also the colors. Um, and I am thinking to do the whole series. Um, with particular colors, animals and the colors that are responsible for every chakra. So if you would look at the painting, it will help you activate those chakra if you have issues with it, for example. So this is something also, you know, connecting spirituality and what I do by painting animals together. So these are, this is actually, I would say, the plan that ha I have for nearest future and creating something much more complex down the road because my paintings take really long time to make again it's really you know hard long exhausting but joyful process yeah. so would you say would you say your interest in mixing art like and like a healing process came like from like your experience and how you came to art like to become an artist in the first place because I, I find it very interesting yeah, I mean, definitely. This when I left those group of people, mm -hmm. um, I just started to, you know, create in order to find happiness, and it's something that came from within. I kind of I focused on myself. I connected with it, and the also important thing is, I became very peaceful because I disconnected from all the toxic things that were happening there. I became peaceful, and I think that's what helped me to work hard in the moment. And that's one thing that I also want to translate for my paintings because I want them to I want them to be peaceful because peacefulness makes a hard work a natural process. When you're peaceful, you know what you want. Working hard on that just becomes natural. It's not hard at all. Part of your flow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now, unfortunately, we're approaching the end of our interview and I would love to leave our viewers with a positive message or like something inspirational that you could share. What is something that inspired you during those hard times, like um, maybe like in the most recent years, like in the past that you think other people could take uh, advantage of in a way? Don't betray yourself. Just focus on yourself. Do what makes you happy and um, don't do things that you don't like, that you don't want to do, just in order to please beat your family, your partners, your friends, or just simply to fit in. Just stop, breathe, look within and see 
What are your dreams and desires? What do you want to do? What do you love? And focus on yourself first. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. I will definitely think a lot about this. Uh, and uh, thank you for sharing your beautiful story. I love it. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, for those who are watching, stay tuned. There's more amazing things coming. Bye. It was also a pleasure to speak to you, wanted to say. So thank you.